This is the plaintiff, Piper Williams. He says he rented space from the defendants for his exercise and dance studio and was forced out because the defendants demanded a 33% rent increase and he couldn't afford it. Now they're keeping his security, making up all these things he was never charged for in his tenancy, but they claim he owes and it's hogwash. He's suing for the rightful return of the $2,000. Oh. These are the defendants, Sarah and Nathan. Sarah says the plaintiff tried to secretly move out and sublet the space to someone else, and that's a big no-no. Nice try, buddy. Now they have every right to keep his security for back sewer charges and snow removal the plaintiff never paid. Not to mention, he didn't give them 30 days notice when he vacated. They're accused of illegally charging for extras. The defendants have filed a countersuit for $4,054.50 for back rent and additional snow and sewer charges. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the dock at the plaintiff rented space from the defendant for his exercise and dance studio, but forced out because the rent just got too damn high. But the defendants say the plaintiff was a shady tenant. It's the case of I'm exercising my right to sue. Thank you, Douglas. You're Piper in. Williams? Yes. Sir. You are suing BK and SM Properties LLC, represented here by Sarah and Nathan. You asked, you've asked us not to use your last names. You're the owners? Yes. yes. Okay. For $2,000, the return of a security deposit that you put down on this property uh, years ago and that they are refusing to return. Yes, sure. You are counterclaiming against him uh, $4,054 for monies that you say he owes that you had never collected throughout those five years. Tell me what's going on. Um, I came to uh, Sarah and Nathan's, I uh, came to their property first in 2010 in the fall. I was looking for a new space for an exercise and dance studio. I had signed a two-year lease, I gave a $2,000 security deposit, and my rent was $1,000 a month. So um, shortly after I had, um, you know, the two years was up, the martial arts studio, I was on the top floor, there was a martial arts studio beneath me. They had moved out. And Sarah had come to me and said, look, with all of your kickboxing and all of your salsa dancing, you make a lot of racket. So basically, you can either take over the bottom floor, you can take over both spaces, or I've got to give you the yo heave ho because I think it's going to be tough to find people that want that kind of racket around. Mm -hmm. And so given those options, I had taken over two spaces, two storefronts. Um, at any rate, about maybe a year and a half after I have both storefronts, a friend of mine, uh, Missy, um, Missy is her name, she was mentioning that her work was, um, she was in a bad position at work, always dreamed of owning a studio. Since I had taken over two storefronts, it had kind of sapped most of the profit out of, out of my business. So I said, well, look, if you're looking for space, I have an extra space that isn't really helping me much. Do you have so, the right to sublet? Um, there was nothing in my contract uh, Can I see your original it. lease? Do you have the original lease? So what did you do? Did you sublet it? Um, I did sublet for the same exact price you know, that I was paying. She was paying uh, $2,000 for the bottom uh, storefront. Um, I stayed upstairs. I didn't uh, take any security from them. She was a friend of mine. And so she just paid exactly what I was paying Sarah. Sarah met, um, met Missy. She thought that it was nice, liked what she was doing with the studio. And she told me up front, she's like, look, I don't know exactly how things are working here, but everything seems fine. When did things fine. go sour between all of you? Um, starting in January um, of 2015, there was a big, a big box gym about two, you know, two doors down. Uh, they lowered their fee to what my fee was. So I went to Sarah and I told her, you're going to be seeing some changes. Things aren't going so well. And instead of doing all exercise, I think the best course of action for me is to be strictly a yoga studio. And so I told her, I let her know that things were going to be changing. Why does she, your landlord need to know that? Because what ended up happening was when all of a sudden she sees that equipment is leaving the studio, she's getting very fearful that I'm absconding or something is happening. So basically, um, one day I, I got a call, a couple of messages from her, uh, from Sarah and from her husband, because um, I had listed the, um, my floor, the second floor, um, up on Craigslist for a possible sublet. So he gets angry. 
Um, well, that was the perception, yes. And it got very upset. And he said, well, you know, you're not allowed to sublet anything. And I said, but I'm already subletting, and you guys were OK. And he said, we don't feel comfortable. And I said, fine, no problem. I took down the ad immediately. And then for the next two weeks, we really didn't have any contact. Mm -hmm. And uh, Did and you have any discussion with somebody and say, I'm leaving? Um, I, I, I did not. OK, is, uh, is Missy still there? Yes. And she's paying rent to you? Yes. OK. Um, all right, so there's a $2,000 security deposit, and he wants it back. Yes. And your response to that is? Well, he didn't pay all his sewer charges. Did he pay any of his sewer charges? Yes, he did. Some quarters he paid, and some quarters he didn't. He said, I'm, uh, I'm working on a lawsuit, and when I get my lawsuit settled, I will pay you all the sewer bills and all the snow removal bills. But he never did. OK, well, did you have a lawsuit going on? Um, I did have a lawsuit, but it did not affect my OK, my but how would she know? I mean, you had to have used that as an excuse for something. Well, what? We would talk quite often, and she knew a great deal about it. OK, I know. But she's saying that, did, did you, in fact, pay some snow removal and some sewer I, bills? I, I paid um, everything that was done between Sarah and I over the five years was done in person. Everything I gave her cash, I couldn't duck her. She always received her money. OK, does anybody have the proof of payment or non-payment of snow removal and sewer? So, tenant pays in cash, supposedly, doesn't get a receipt, screwed? Pretty much, yes. He doesn't have any paper trail to prove the cash that he paid. Is there any way a tenant can prove to a judge through character, I paid? No. No? No, you can't. You, you need a receipt. You, you need, it's your, it's your, the tenant's responsibility to make sure that he has a paper trail. What if it's somebody like Gandhi? And he comes into court and, say, and, and, and says, you've got to believe me, I wouldn't lie. Um, the Pope. Still, How about the Pope? Uh, my pinky would still be screwed. <laughs> oh, the Pope is screwed? <laughs> OK, going inside the courtroom. How did you figure out what he'd paid and what he had? Because you're going back now six years almost. So how, how did, or five years, how did you figure out? Well, I looked uh, over my ledgers and I. Can I see your ledgers? I don't then? have. Oh. Did he ever pay? Wait, you went through your ledgers, but you, I can't go through your ledgers? Did he ever They're pay? at home. Did he They're at home? Pay? What are they doing at home? You're being sued over this. Go ahead, go ahead, light into her. <laughs> what, did you bring the ledgers? Wait, 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 before you light into her, did you bring did the ledgers? He, I'm asking her. Does he have proof that he paid me? Because he always paid in cash. I, I want to know first, do you have proof? No, I don't have my ledgers with me. Because that's what I'd like to see of how it is that you, because we're, now we're on your counterclaim. You have the burden of proving the counterclaim. So I want to know how you come to 4,000. That, that is your burden to prove. Right. So you've brought nothing? <coughs> Correct. I brought the bills. OK, fair, and fair enough. She would like to see proof. She would like me to ask you what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Can you please show me uh, proof of having paid snow removal bills? As I'd said, Your Honor, everything was, it's a little bit of a he said, she said when everything yeah, was but done. Why, yeah, but in, it, it in, is true that you, if you're paying in cash for something, you should be getting a receipt for that something. Yes, Your Honor. OK. Your Honor, um, could I say something? Yeah. He but, never paid anything. She says he did. No. She just said he, just he did. He, <laughs> did he pay any of the water in your oh. this sewer? Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you, my wife. I'll just tell you where I come in. We help manage the property, but she's on a day-to-day -day basis with them, and she's very kind to them. She lets them get away with murder. Okay. When she needs a bulldog, I get involved. He says that uh, we texted or called him. I don't never, I never called him in my life. I haven't seen him since the first day he moved in. Okay. Maybe one time other that I, just to cover myself. Mm -hmm. I'm a licensed real estate agent. Now, did you show the ad? It, I, I think she's gonna smack your hand if you shove it in her face one more time. I don't time. think so. All right. I don't think so. She'll wait till we go out. No, I got you. I understand <laughs> that, look, your lease, let's just go over a couple things. Number yes. one, your lease says you pay for snow removal. Yes. Number two, so I'm going to need to see proof of what you paid for snow removal. Because I am seeing proof of what she paid for snow removal. All right? Number two, your lease says you pay for sewage. Yes. So you're going to have to prove to me that you paid for sewage. Number three, your lease specifically says that you don't have the right to sublet. Okay? Now, I understand you're on a month-to-month, -month, but you don't get greater rights on a month-to-month -month than you had in your lease. Yes, sure. that, you knew you couldn't sublet, and you were subletting all over the place. Now, what am I supposed to do with, like, zero proof here about what was paid and what wasn't paid? This is, by the way, the 209 is what? Snow removal or sewage? No, sewer ledger from uh, Howell Township Sewer. And I told him that going over 
my ledgers, my books, that he owes, actually owes me more money than I owe him. And then do you tell him just walk away? I didn't, and then he, I didn't hear from him anymore. And then he sued you. Exactly. And also, he didn't pay the snow removal from the downstairs either, but I'm not suing for the downstairs. I just did it on the upstairs. Did you like him? I did like him. And I still, as a person, he, he's, you know, I really try to be very nice. And nice people finish last. And when I do get into trouble, he, he like. I tell her not to get too friendly with the tenants. I've learned a lesson. <laughs> You've learned a lesson? And I'm always learning business lessons. Business is business. If it was, I, it was in my hands, it wouldn't okay. come to well, this, Well, if business is business, also, you should be giving out receipts when somebody pays you cash so that they, because anytime they say, but I paid you cash, you should be able to say, show me a receipt. Right? Mm -hmm. That's part business. Um, you should, when you're sued, come into court with ledgers. Um, and uh, if you pay cash, you should be having proof that you paid cash. Yes, Your Honor. And um, here's what's going to happen. Um, going to kind of split the baby, and I'm going to allow you to keep the $2,000 of the security deposit. That's what I'm going to do. And by the way, you would owe December if you hadn't, you know, if you if you didn't give any notice, which it kind of sounds like Your you Honor, didn't. I was already I was already told. I don't care if you're gone. You were not. You know, it doesn't matter. You you still have to give I, notice of when you're leaving. I, I wasn't gone. I'm, I wasn't even told to leave until December first okay. at ten twenty seven. Can you show me proof of all the snow removals that you paid? Uh, I can. Because it's getting very close to being a four thousand dollar judgment. <laughs> so I'm going to call it the draw that you were willing to call it. That's what's going to happen. Okay. Full size, full size, please. So this is a case where the lack of proof on both sides hit, hurt both parties. Really, that's the whole problem here. You couldn't prove what you were trying to say to the judge, right? Right. To get across. And you and your husband were kind of a little mixed up, but that was kind of funny, you know. <laughs> I thought he was going to really hurt your case, you know. That was... Oh, well, me? Yeah, yeah, when you didn't agree with your wife. But that's okay. Sorry, that's the way the court has decided. You must sign some documents, okay? okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Now the plaintiff is on his way out of the courtroom. You didn't get your deposit back, so no, I did not. that's it again. You didn't have proof either, so... No, proof certainly would have been the, uh, the difference maker. Truth is good, but proof is better. So. You've learned a valuable yes. lesson. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Harvey? I've got to say, uh, you are an idiot if you don't get a receipt from a the landlord. They do not have your best interests in mind. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.